Hi, it's Pete with the smallbusinessresourcecenter.com. I'm making this video about why you should apply, why you should not apply for the EIDL. Well, I'm sure if you saw my other videos, you saw that the EIDL advance, the grant portion, what people call a grant, is no longer available. So yes, yeah, you can get the EIDL. For some reason, the government has a problem with wanting to approve small business and independent contractors for this. They seem to be very, very picky. And I know a lot of you have probably seen the articles where certain people um, have applied for EIDL probably or Paycheck Protection Program, probably put false information and seem to get approved uh, for millions of dollars where you know a small business owner applies is hoping to get maybe 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, or even 150,000, which is a maximum limit on the EIDL, and can't get it. You know, me in particular, I have supplied, I got the lowest amount, which was ridiculous, $1,400. After I got the $1,400, I was told to apply for reconsideration and increase, fill out everything, Weeks later, now they want my 2019 tax returns. And, you know, now it's probably going to be three to five more weeks. And I'm like, well, this is ridiculous. You got to keep in mind, I started this process in uh, March. <laughs> and now it's, what, four months later, five months later, and I'm still going through bullshit. Um, from my understanding, they also said tax returns were not required but they still force the issue and require tax returns. Now I put my reconsideration in and still boom, what do they do? Okay, now we want your new tax returns. You should have did them by now. Um, so I think this whole thing is ridiculous. Comment below, let me know what other problems you've had with the EIDL and the Paycheck Protection Program. So now I'm gonna review and subscribe to my channel. Now I'm gonna review the Paycheck Protection Program and the EIDL. So if you look at this chart, the purpose of the EIDL is to meet the financial obligations and operating expenses that could have been met if a disaster did not occur. So obviously the coronavirus is a disaster and basically that's what they're doing here. So you can get up to 2 million in funding at 3.75% for businesses and 2.75% for nonprofits. And the EIDL loan is not forgivable, but the advance grant is forgivable. So basically, from my understanding, the advance, if you got it, so we won't go there because I know there's so many problems with that, but if you got it, it's forgivable. And the maturity rate's 30 years. So the great thing about this is this is a very low payment for the type of loan that you could use to help your business when you really need it. And also there's a one year deferment. That means there's no payments for a year. So, you know, for, for a lot of people, this is still a great program, but from the life of me, I don't understand why the SBA is making it so difficult to apply when clearly you can find a whole bunch of articles on people that, and there's probably people that got away with it, but committed fraud and, and got approved for these government programs. Keep in mind, if you said you have 170 employees and you have none, <laughs> I don't understand how you got your loan because they're so critical um, of all the documents that they've asked me for, as well as many you people. I'm sure many you people have been asked for many documents, and still when you provided them, they seem to be picky. Um, now let's review the Paycheck Protection Program and why I feel you should apply for that program. I'm going to also talk about some of the negatives that I mentioned. But the Paycheck Protection Program is forgivable if you use it for payroll. This says 75 because this is an old chart, but I believe it's 60 now has to be payroll and the rest can be operating expenses. So <clears throat> that's why it's kind of being pushed. This was a chart, by the way, that I got from the SBA. So terms are up to $10 million and 1% interest rate. It is forgivable, which means once you fill out the proper paperwork, you don't have to pay it back. They're not calling it a grant because once you call something a grant, that means you don't have to pay it back. Um, so there's a process to make it forgivable. Two-year maturity rate, that means if you do not apply for your forgiveness within the term of the loan and use the funds within the term of the, the loan, 
basically you have to pay it back within two years. And that has six months deferred payments. Six months deferred payments, of course, means there's no payment from six months after you receive the funding. So this makes the Paycheck Pro Protection Program a great program. And I feel the government is trying to push that more. Um, I really want to get my EIDL. I think it would be helpful. And the main reason is what I'm going to explain right now. The Paycheck Protection Program has a $100,000 cap. And I know for a certain fact, if you're a small business owner and you don't put yourself on as an employee, that $100,000 cap means you're technically excluded. Now, you're supposed to be able to reduce the amount that you're stating is your payroll. But I tried to do that with one lender a long time ago and for some reason didn't work. They just deleted my application and they said I did not qualify. So, and I talked to another local lender, by the way, that's why I push local ones. I explained what happened and they said, no, you're allowed to do that. So I don't know what was going on with the other lender, but the local ones seemed very friendly and I should be contacting them for the Paycheck Protection Program. But in my opinion, the SBA needs to recognize the fact that a small business independent contractor has an income greater than $100,000 and they need to change that cap. Um, and when you're looking at the EIDL, they need to have full transparency too because there's different methods that they're stating that they're calculating the EIDL. And for some reason, they just don't want to blatantly tell people this is how it's being calculated. <laughs> so, um, well, if, if it's on their website now, I didn't see it, but I looked for it so many times. And then I have the leaked document. If you look at my other videos, maybe I'll put a link in the description to the leaked SBA document about the EIDL. And then I also, um, well, a lot of the senators, or senators and other people have stated that there's a way that they're calculating it. Um, so I have that information also. But this is Pete with the Small Business Resource Center .com. Uh, explaining why I think you should apply for the Paycheck Protection Program. Also, the reason why they're probably going to extend that, even though it expires August, is because they want people back to work. And this is not really an explanation of why they're not giving the EIDL out so easily, but I'm just curious, why is this easy for big businesses and so difficult for small businesses? Because, you know, when it comes down to it, they say they're doing it, things in order, but I, I would almost think that if they were audited, they're processing these big applications much quicker and faster than the, us independent contractors. I'm just thinking that, you know, if there's somebody looked it up and recorded all the dates, everything was done, it would be shown. Just like with the banks that were not taking applications for Paycheck Protection Program, but they were processing them for large companies. It's sad to have to say that, but you know, might as well be honest. So put in the comments below your comments, questions, and I have a couple very important videos coming up and one of them is going to be released tonight or tomorrow. So you should subscribe if you want direct contact information for the EIDL uh, lenders and Jovita Carranza. All right. Have a great day. <laughs>